Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a masculine bar of soap uh, and I'm going to be using this fragrance oil called Rainforest Whoop, there from uh, Crafter's Choice Wholesale Supply Plus uh, and it smells wonderful and it has some musky sort of undernotes to it. Um, it's just a really nice scent. I mean I'll use this bar. I'm calling it a masculine bar because I haven't done a manly bar in a while but I would use this so I tend to like musky or manly or scents anyway, but it's going to be a goat milk soap because you know even the guys need to take care of their skin. And uh, so what I want to do for me, I've been looking at some of the wood grain soaps that people have done. Um, oh, there's so many on YouTube that have just done such an amazing job of a wood grain pour, but it's the cutting of the bar that my brain just doesn't work like that. I'm like, how are they cutting it? And I've seen uh, Tree Marie does one where she shows you step by step how to do it and it still doesn't click with me. So I'm gonna try a modified version. I've thought about how the grain goes and how I would wanna slice this bar. And this is experimental. So this is gonna be my faux wood grain soap pour. And what I'm gonna do is sort of a Clyde slide in the pot and then I'll show you when we get there. Come along with me. I'm gonna to attempt to do a semi wood grain. It may come out like a tiger stripe. It'll be cool. For the colors that I'm gonna use in this manly soap are, I'm gonna put a little walnut hull powder. I bought this in bulk um, for all, in all of it. So it'll have little speckles in there. And I've got, okay, gingerbread brown, mica from Crafter's Choice. And this is a caramel brown butterscotch and black pearl from Nurture Soap, which is gorgeous because I just want to punch those browns up. And then I'm going to do a little um, camouflage, which is a green tone, but it's kind of a woodsy um, color anyway. So those are going to be my colors that we're going to pour in layers uh, and so and this fragrance oil says that it does not accelerate trace because we need that we need this soap to be really fluid today to get the pour I don't know I hope I'm not being too ambitious the wood grain cutting soap it just blew my mind and so this is going to be my version of a faux wood grain <laughs> I hope it comes out cool it's going to smell great so come along with me and let's attempt to do this goat milk soap today and if you enjoy watching my videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe and the bell for notifications. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook too. So what I've got going on in my little stainless steel container here is half goat's milk and half distilled water. And I'm about to add my little cotton ball size of Tussa silk fibers. I'm gonna just snip that in. I'm gonna add my lye very slowly. And then after it's all dissolved and the silk fibers are all dissolved, I'm going to put this in an ice bath and let it sit while I get my oils prepped. But I figured I'd just show you how I do this with goat's milk. I have them uh, frozen in little pucks uh, and I just weighed it out on my scale. And so we just add the lye very slowly, add a little and stir. And this will heat up nicely and it'll heat up even with all the frozen goat's milk. It's going to heat up enough to melt those silk fibers. I just want to show you real quick how yellow it gets when uh, it starts to finally melt and get really heated up. I don't know if you can see. It gets like a really dark buttery yellow. All right, I'm measuring out all my oils and I remembered I had some of this sandalwood infused olive oil uh, that I took sandalwood chips and then solar infused um, you put olive oil over it and solar infused it and it's just wonderful and rich and with the wood theme going on I'm going to be using this for my olive oil portion today so I just wanted to show you in case you were wondering why the oils are so dark it's the sandalwood but it's wonderful all right we've got all our oils here ready to go so I'm going to add my additives which is my black walnut hull powder I'm just going to do one heaping teaspoon in there and my organic colloidal oats, which I'll do two tablespoons, and my kale and clay. I'm going to do a little shy on the clay because I want longer play time. That's about a tablespoon and a half of the kale and clay. And uh, let me show you what else I have going on. I've mixed all my colors in. A, I poured off a little bit of the oil in each of these cups and got my colors pre-mixed. 
um, and that black pearl was a little too black so I added just a touch of the butterscotch in there to kind of mute it down to a very kind of dark brown so um, played around with that so I used some of my base oils for that and for my goat milk solution it was pretty yellow and because of the darkness I'm putting hemp oil in here and the um, the sandalwood infused olive oil so it's very dark I added about a half a teaspoon of titanium dioxide to my goat milk and uh, mixed that in so those are the additives I'm gonna get these blended in and we'll uh, come back in a bit okay so the black walnut hulls made this even darker so I'm glad I put a little TD in here uh, with my goat's milk I'm gonna hand stir this and I've got all my buckets here for the different colors so let me tell you the plan before I get started, and if it starts to thicken, we'll just modify it as we go. The plan is to get my different colors mixed up in these different containers, and then pour them back into this large container, layering them like a Clyde slide attempt. And then, I'm because this is a slab mold, I'm going to just pour it this direction because I want the striations of the wood to go this way. Normally, I pour this way, and if you cut it, it would be the wrong. So. In my mind, I'm thinking that I could get a semi wood grain look if I zigzag back and forth this way. So that is sort of what's in my mind. <laughs> we will see. If this gets thick, we'll just modify it and do a regular swirl. This I put, did put the fragrance oil in here. It smells fantastic. Um, so it's gonna be a great soap either way. We've got the hemp oil, the goat milk, I mean, sandalwood infused olive oil. This is gonna be fantastic soap, even if I can't get this tricky design. So uh, let's just <laughs> let's just go for it here and see what we get. That's one of the fun things about soap is uh, it, it just is never the same each time. I've done repeat recipes exactly the same. I take meticulous notes on each recipe I do, and um, different days they'll just behave differently. It's kind of fun. It keeps you on your toes. Soap making is never boring, I don't think. I think it's just always kind of cool, creative, exciting. I love making soap. I would encourage you, if you're watching this video and you haven't tried to make soap, um, make it. It's kind of addicting. <laughs> I had said before, uh, the reason I got into soap making, I homeschooled all four of my children and uh, we did it as a science project, how you take a greasy substance and a caustic substance and add them together and you get something that's gentle and makes you clean. And it was a cool science project and the kids were like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, this is great. And I have been making soap ever since. So they, were, they weren't underwhelmed, but I was just bonanza for soap making after that. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that and that was a long time ago when all my kids are at home and I loved homeschooling by the way as a homeschool mom. I love Katie Carson. She's a homeschool kid. Look at how creative they are. I just one of the benefits of homeschooling I think is just um, the kids can really explore their personalities and I don't know. I just loved it. So I'm going to try and get semi even amounts. I'm just going to Start pouring off in these buckets and then we'll add our colors. Oops, I need to get on the leader side. And these little plastic containers that I'm pouring into are just from the paint section at Lowe's. They're super cheap and they have measurements on the side and uh, they're safe to use for soap making. So they're, these are fantastic. So I'm sure um, Home Depot has them too or any hardware store. They're just paint mixing buckets and you can even get lids to go with them too if you want to like pre-mix your lye and uh, all that so just a tip for soap making supplies I'm always looking for good soap making supplies and that new um, stainless steel pot that I mixed my lye in is new for me I got it on Amazon and I love it because it's a wider mouth than the ones I normally use um, which is great because uh, when I have ice chunks and stuff, it's easier to stir when it's like big chunks. Let's see, kind of shy here. Trying to get this all evenly split. Set that off to the side and we'll start adding our colors. So I'm gonna have one uncolored. And uh, here's my butterscotch mica, I forget the name of it. Anyway, it's beautiful, that's going in. 
And again, these are just, I mix them with the oils for my base oil, so I'm not um, super fatting with these oils. I super fat my recipe anyway when I'm making it, so <clears throat> the extra oils I'm adding here are not super fatting. Oh, that's pretty. All right, let me see. This is gonna be tight squeeze for everything. Here is my camouflage from Nurture Soap, which I love this color. Of course, my husband's a Marine. Maybe I, uh, maybe there's a reason I love this color. He's a retired Marine, sorry. And I have a nephew that's an active duty Marine. Very proud of that young man. And my son is in the Coast Guard. One of my sons is in the Coast Guard. He's a diver and he just, uh, is getting back. He's in New Zealand now. They were in Antarctica. He was on an icebreaker doing a dive trip down to McMurdo Station. Um, very proud of him. And so they dive under the ice and do um, basically their underwater repairmen down there and ice diving. He was super excited to go and do this. Uh, I was praying that he would stay warm on the trip. <laughs> but um, they have been out of cell range well, they're down at Antarctica, so I haven't been able to talk to him, and I really miss talking to him. So um, they're finished with the deployment down there. They're headed to New Zealand, and as soon as he gets in satellite range, I can't wait to talk to him and hear how it went and if he saw any wildlife underwater and all that. So I kind of live vicariously through his stories. I personally, golly gee, you could not pay me to go diving. Sorry if there's divers watching. I zero, less than zero interest scares the daylight out of me. All right, so I'm just gonna get these real quick. I'm not gonna do a lot of stirring. I just wanna get the colors nice and incorporated and we'll start pouring back into our big container. And we're thickening up a little, but you know, it's definitely workable. So I'm hoping that it's not gonna go on up here. This is an ambitious pour and you know, there's so many factors into soaping. So let me see. Uh, let's start with let's start with the dark one. Get everything pushed over so you can see what I'm doing. So this is called a Clyde slide, and you just pour a little, and then you just rotate the colors. Let's do a light and a dark and a light and a dark. I'm gonna get this out of here. There. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way to the top. I'm going to have to move kind of quick here, so I'm going to quit talking because I work faster when I don't talk. pouring.
So it's been about 24 hours and let's get this unmolded. I can't wait to see how those stripes came out on the inside to see if it looks anything like wood grain or not. Maybe it'll just be kind of a cool swirl and that'll be fine too. So let's get this on out of here and see what we're dealing with. to get the wire tight on here. There, it makes for a smoother cut. Let me cut the end piece off for my little sample bar and then uh, let's see what these swirls look like. Oh my goodness, I think it worked, you guys. I mean, it's a little, well, let's get into this and see, but that is better than I was expecting. I was, um, trying to keep my hopes down and not not get too uh not get my hopes up too high for this but let's take a look oh my word i think it looks like wood i mean that's as close as i hoped to get yay oh golly i'm so tickled let's keep cutting and see uh see how we go on these 